Hello, welcome back to another episode of MTD CNC North America. Guys, I have something special for you today. We are standing in front of a beast of a machine from Hydromat, and I am standing with a beast of a person in Mateus. We're gonna learn a little bit more, probably more like a lot more information about this 12 station Hydromat machine. So Mateus, thank you so much for being with me here at MTD CNC. Thank you for taking the time, appreciate it. Absolutely, so we're at RW Screw today and we're standing in front of this Hydromat machine, which you know a lot about. So let, let's learn a little bit. Yeah. What, tell me the story of this machine. The story of this machine is, uh, it's quite simple, but it, it took a little longer. Um, it's coming from the legacy world of Hydromat. We built a long time machine since 40 years, and the machines, the old, we call them legacy machines, they produce millions, millions of parts, and they're dedicated for a simple job. Uh, the world changed, the market changed, the demands changed. These long uh, life cycle jobs are going away or went overseas to Asia. Uh, they're coming back slowly, uh, we appreciate that. But the demands are different. We are looking more as a flexible machine, a family run machine, the total volume is still there, but we have a big part mix. And our answer was to develop this machine called Eclipse to come with short cycle times, still multi-spittle machine, but with a quick changeover cap capability for short part runs and uh, quick changeover times. That's the key what we developed here on Hydromat. So I have a smorgasbord of questions for you based on what you just said, because you're right. A lot of products did go over to Asia just based on, you know, the cost, right? And a lot of it's starting to be reshored, especially we saw that over the last year. This machine is significant in producing a mass amount of parts very quickly, isn't it? That's correct. And that's the philosophy of Hydromat. We take a part, which normally takes on a standalone single spindle machine, let's say two, three, four minutes, re-break the process down station by station and come up with cycle times, eight seconds, 12 seconds, 15 seconds. In this particular case, we reduce the cycle time from three and a half minutes down to 22 seconds for a very complicated part, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm glad you said that because talking with the owner of RW Screw, this part is a very complex part that used to take them several machines, several employees. Now, it's 22 seconds on one machine. Now, some people might not understand, so I want to convey this message as well. Each of these individual 12 station boxes is like its own individual CNC machine. So it's like 12 CNC machines in one, and there's a robot on the far side and a saw on the inside. It's really putting together some work. Correct. That is correct. In the regular high demand, we can do that in this machine too, would be a single axis movement. Let's say in station one, we cut off. In station two, we drill a hole. In station two, we, we bore it. In station four, we ream it. Um, that would be a single process. but. We have more flexibility here. We have every spindle is equipped with three axes, X, Y, and C. So you're correct. It's a machining center on its own. Wow. 12 machining centers in one machine. To me, that blows my mind a little bit to know that in this almost like an octagon for the MMA we're standing in, we have 12 CNC's that can just do its own niche uh, area of a part that can be as complicated or as simple as we like, whether it be OD, ID, switching from one chuck to another chuck. Here we're utilizing the Heimbuk chucks, which we know are extremely flexible, rigid, and accurate. Even talking with some of my friends right. at Heimbuk, we're talking about 25% more rigidity, which allows this machine to probably utilize its high speed yeah, capabilities. That is correct. Yeah, that is absolutely correct. So uh, the key also in this machine, on a roti transfer machine like this, multi-spindle machine, the first station is a cutoff unit. We have a bar feed on here, and we cut the bar off. Sometimes that could be our lead cycle time, which we don't like to do, cutoff. It's uh, almost non-value added, but it has to be done. So in this particular machine, we have a cutoff uh, unit in there. We call it a guillotine, double fat, and we'll cut a 65 millimeter steel bar in less than eight seconds. That is key. So the cutoff station is no more the bottleneck on this machine. Something else that I think significant information to convey, Mateus, is that although we're running a bar stock of some kind, whether you know it's square or octagon or hexagon or circle, whatever it might be, some of these stations can actually turn into a milling machine. So 
some of the stations are just indexing and not turning. So we can do turning and milling. It's all inclusive, isn't it? Well, that's another key on this machine. Um, this machine starts with station one, two, three, four as a regular a collet machine. The, the part is stationary in collet. And then we do our features, milling, drilling, reaming, uh, and so on. Then on the back end of this machine, we call them sub-spindles or pick-off spindles. We pick the parts up and make a true turning lace out of it. They keep a complete uh, close tolerance and, a, and a almost to zero run out. And it's very key on this machine. Now we have a precision turn part and a drilled milled feature in one machine. And if I'm not mistaken, correct me if I'm wrong, Matthias, but on the end of this, coming soon, an RW screw, you're going to be able to measure the parts when they come off as well. And then just put them, it's pretty much from bar stock to a shipping box from beginning to end. That is correct. That's another feature we, we uh, supply to our customers if they, the request comes in. It's uh, having a 100% gauge part, which we will add to this machine. So there's zero inspection needed after this. We have every part is 100% gauge and measured and it's a good part. Absolutely beautiful, my friend. And I just want to reiterate because I think it's important. You said it um, in, your in our you know, conversation a couple seconds ago, but I think it's important to reiterate the precision of this machine. How precise is this machine? Well, we, because of these features uh, on the turning side, the turning lace on the back end, it's the same as any other lace out there. We do almost, uh, uh, we're talking about tens uh, um, of tolerances and in, in, in runouts, absolutely. Wow. Precision machining. Something else I really like, Mateus, and I really like this feature. So, for those of you who have bar feed machines or a lot of tail stock on the back of your bar, sometimes you can get that whipping reaction, right? And that whipping reaction, that chatter will then transfer to the t cutting tool, to the finish of the part, to the speed that you're able to machine. Here, we're taking that bar stock, and we're immediately cutting it. So, we don't have to worry about that tail whipping around anymore, do we? Well, that's a major uh, difference between Heidemart and uh, multi spindle machines or turning machines or Swiss. We don't have a bar uh, wabbling around in, in, the, in, the, in the feeder. Our bar feeder is stationary, the bar is stationed, uh, it's, 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 uh, it's solid, and we move it into the machine, cut it off. There's no vibration into the machine, but it's a major difference, especially in these closed tolerance parts. You cannot allow any vibration on the part in the machine. Yeah, yeah. So we know that we're utilizing Heimbuch and Hydromat because of the flexibility, right? We know that if I need to switch from, you know, something around bar to something that's a hexagon shape or something like that, we can switch out all these chucks in 30 minutes or less. I mean, a complete changeover, which used to take, you know, hours to even days to change over. So it's very flexible. But my question to you is, and we understand that it's flexible. My question to you is, if I'm a customer watching right now and I'm going, wow, that, that machine sounds amazing, but I only make X amount of number of parts, right? If I'm a customer right now and I go, well, I make a million parts, that makes all the sense in the world to me, obviously. I can reduce my cycle time from, you know, 10 minutes to 22 seconds, and it comes off repeatedly, right? So my question is, Mateus, what range of parts would you say is a good range for someone to consider a hydromat machine like this? Is it 10,000, 5,000, 100,000, a million? What range of flexibility do you guys consider? Yeah, with this technology, with a multi-spindle, highly flexible roti transfer machine, we're, we're talking about lot sizes of 1,000, 2,000 pieces in changeover. We have many customers change over daily, which is amazing. It was not possible in the old days. You would never do that. No, don't even think about it. Change over roti transfer machine daily. Today, this is absolutely possible with CNC technology. Well, for my purposes, you have blown my mind today. You have educated me on so many possibilities. You know my wheels are Good. absolutely spinning. I'm sure there's some viewers right now going, doing the same thing. So if they want to learn more about you and Hydromat in general, how would they find you? What's your website, social medias? How would they best find you? Well, we are doing all social media. We're on LinkedIn. We're on uh, all of them, all platforms. But I think our website is the best, shows the best. Go to hydemat.com. You see applications, you see parts, you see machines. You see the whole company and get a very good flair and uh, idea about who we are. And we are in St. Louis, Missouri. We are an American-based company. Mateus, thank you so much for sharing this story with MTD. You have offered me so much wisdom today. I'm incredibly grateful. I might not be able to sleep tonight because I'm going to be thinking so much, but I'm incredibly grateful for you sharing your story with me, MTD, and our global audience. Thank you so much, Thank my friend. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks for your time.